Transforming Linear Functions. Our objective is to transform linear functions, as well as solve problems involving linear transformations. Why learn this? Transformations allow you to visualize and compare many different functions at once. Let's start with translations and reflections. So translations, when you translate, you have a horizontal shift or a vertical shift. So a horizontal shift is going to move things from left to right. Whereas a vertical shift is going to move things up and down. So with our horizontal change, it's going to change the input value. So your input, if you recall back, is your x value. So your change is going to be with the x. So in this case, f and then x minus h. Keep in mind that this formula that they have here uses a minus sign. So when h is greater than 0, it moves to the right. And when h is less than 0, it moves to the left. But when you subtract a negative, it's like adding a positive. So you may have to think backwards for this one. A vertical shift deals with the output value changes. So because the output value is what changes, not the x value or input value, it's going to be on the outside because you're taking the whole function and you're going to add on k to move it up and down. If it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it moves down. Now let's look at reflections. With reflections, you can reflect across the y-axis or the x-axis. So, if you're reflecting across the y-axis, your input value changes. When your input changes, it's going to be changed with your x. So it's f, and then the negative is with the x. And then your lines are symmetric about the y-axis, because we're reflecting across that one. Now, when you're reflecting across the x-axis, your y is what's changing, so your y value, or your output value, is going to change. So the whole function is going to be minus, not just the little x part. Let's practice. All right, so let g of x be the indicated transformation of f of x. Write the rule for g of x. OK, so what we have here is we have f of x equals 2x plus 3. And we want a vertical translation four units up. So when we're translating something vertically, we're going to add or subtract on whatever we're looking at at the very end, because the output is what's changing, not your x value. So our g of x is going to equal our f of x value, and then we're going to add on 4. So it's f of x plus 4, just like we see here. f of x plus k, well, our k value happens to be 4. So, well, we're not quite there yet. We need to put in or substitute in our value of f of x. So we have g of x equals 2x plus 3, and then our plus 4. And now we can combine like terms. So g of x in the n ends up equaling 2x plus 7. So that's our rule for g of x. Let's try another one. So this time we're going to take our linear function defined in the table and reflect it across the y-axis. Well, to start with, we're going to want to get ourselves a formula. So our step one when we're given a set of coordinates here, or even a table here, we're going to want to find our slope. So our slope, if you recall, is the change in y over the change in x. So we're going to have 2 minus 0, and then 0 minus negative 1. So 2 minus 0, and 0 minus negative 1. When you do so, you have 2 over 1, which is equivalent to 2. And then we know that that is our y-intercept. So we have y equals 2x 
plus 2. So that's our original formula, our original function. So now we want to reflect it across the y-axis. So when we're reflecting, we look back, if we're reflecting across the y-axis, the input value is what's going to change. So the negative is going to go with the input value. So reflecting across the y-axis, our input value is going to be what's going to change. So when we rewrite this for g of x, since that seems to be our favorite one to use so far, so g of x is going to equal 2 times negative x plus 2. Notice how it's just the input value changing, not the whole function. And then we can simplify. So g of x equals negative 2x plus 2. Okay, so now let's look at stretches and compressions. So a horizontal stretch or compression by a factor of b. So once again, horizontally you're changing your input value. Now you want to be careful, because when it changes the input value, it changes it by 1 over b. So say you had by a factor of a half, okay, if you had a factor of a half, that's going to translate here to f of 1 over 1 half times x. So just keep that in mind. Your b value is on the bottom, it's in the denominator. Okay, the vertical stretch or compression is a little bit nicer, and because it's vertical, we're going to change the output value, because our y is our vertical line, so that makes sense. So our output value is going to be what changes. So you have the value of a, so whatever factor you're using, and you're going to multiply the whole function by that a value, whereas if it's horizontal, it's just the x value. Let's practice. Okay, so let g of x be a horizontal compression of f of x equals 2x minus 1 by a factor of 1 third. Write the rule for g of x and graph the function. Alright, so we have g of x. Now, we're dealing with a horizontal compression. So since it's a horizontal compression, horizontal, that's when we have f, and it's going to be 1 over b. So our b is what the factor is that we're changing it by. So our b is this 1 third. And it goes with the x, not with the whole function. Remember, it's horizontal, so it only goes with our input value. Because our horizontal axis is the x-axis. All right, so essentially we're going to have 2 and then it's 1 over b x and minus 1, if we look at our whole function as though it's got the 1 over b in there. So now we need to substitute in our b value since we know what it is. So we have g of x equals 2, and then we have 1 over 1 third x minus 1. And now we have to start simplifying. So g of x equals 2, and 1 divided by 1 third is the same thing as multiplying by 3. So 3x minus 1. And one last step here. We'll have g of x equals 6x minus 1. And that's our rule. Let's try something a little more challenging. Combining transformations of linear functions. Let g of x be a vertical shift of f of x equals x. We're going to go down two units, and then we're going to follow that by a vertical stretch by a factor of 5. And in the end, we want a rule for g of x. Now we've got a couple of steps in here. So we might not want to start off by writing g of x, because we want to have our rule in the end talk about g of x. So we're going to use h of x in the middle here. Alright, so we're going to do our first one, which is the down two units. 
So we have h of x equals whatever our f of x value is, and because we're going down two units, we're going to change our output value, because up and down follows our y, which is our outputs. So since we're going down two, we're going to subtract two. So now we have h of x, and our f of x is x, so we can just substitute in x, so we've got x minus two. All right, now it gets a little bit trickier, because now we have to do our vertical stretch, and it's our last piece, so now we can finish it off with g of x. So since it's a vertical stretch, we're going to multiply the entire function by that. So therefore, it's 5 times our h of x. And now we substitute in h of x. So we have g of x equals 5 times the quantity x minus 2. And we can continue simplifying, and we're going to distribute that 5. So g of x equals 5x minus 10. And there's our rule. Let's try one more problem. Fundraising application. The dance club is selling beaded purses as a fundraiser. The function r of n equals 12 minus 5n represents the club's revenue in dollars, where n is the number of purses sold. So we can think of this r of n equals 12.5n as our original function. Now what if I were to say the club had to pay $75 for the materials? needed to make these purses. So now let's write a new function. All right, so if they had to pay $75, that means we're gonna have to subtract 75 from what we thought we were gonna be making, because we have to kind of pay back what we've already purchased. So our new one, our profit, is going to equal 12.5 N minus the cost of our materials. So now let's graph both of these. So we're going to graph r of n and p of n. And this is what we end up with. So for r of n, we would start at 0. And we can go up 12 and a half and over 1. And then for seven, negative 75, we're going to start at negative 75 and go up 12.5 and go over 1. And then if we look, what would be the translation? Well, we went down 75. And that ends our lesson on transforming linear functions.